another video for you with new stories from ethiopia somalia and middle east as well breaking news is from israel where joe biden u.s president uh, signed a pledge with israeli prime minister a few hours ago the pledge is about iran the two countries have agreed to stop iran from acquiring from making nuclear bomb second new story is uh, about kenya somalia relations hassan sheikh mahmood is going to depart somalia for another visit in coming hours this time he's going to land in kenya nairobi kenya kenya somalia relations remain strained during previous uh, former somali president uh, abdullahi farmajo's era but hassan sheikh wants to renew ties with all his neighbors uh next we have a new story from gambela region a regional state of ethiopia where number of refugees is becoming bigger than number of locals gambela is becoming a re- recruitment uh, uh area a recruitment field for uh, armed groups what is happening from south sudan as well reportedly people are entering gambela in large numbers gambela shares border with south sudan and lastly we will try to analyze two claims made by ethiopian government today Ethiopian Communication Ministry today held a weekly press briefing and uh, the minister a communication minister made two claims one about Oromo Liberation Army and the other about Tigray People Liberation Front what did the communication minister say uh, about OLA and TPLF uh, firstly uh, Middle East viewers so uh, Joe Biden uh, is in Israel and today Joe Biden US president and Yair Lapid uh, Israeli prime minister signed a pledge the pledge is about uh, Iran the two countries have agreed to stop Iran from making nuclear bomb it's not a new pledge the two countries uh, have been saying for years that they uh, won't let iran acquire nuclear bomb but this time they are saying that uh, they'll use all their resources to stop iran from making nuclear bomb uh firstly we know that next week uh, russian president uh, vladimir putin is due to visit iran Iran is supporting uh, Russia militarily in the war against Ukraine. Iran has provided drones to Russian government. So before Putin's arrival, Joe Biden has arrived in uh, Israel and uh, the statement is obviously a way of putting pressure upon Iran. Iran is already under pressure. It has been under sanctions for years. its economy uh, has suffered a lot inflation unemployment despite all the coercive measures uh, iran uh, could not be uh, pressurized by the us government to stop its uranium enrichment activities in 2015 uh, iran agreed to a deal to cap its nuclear projects when democrats were in power in uh, the us then we know that trump came to power and he withdrew from jcpoa the deal signed between iran and some other countries to stop iranian ambitions uh, regarding making of nuclear bomb uh, now us israel want a new deal they want to put restrictions on iran that iran uh must not be able to make nuclear bomb 
So both countries, uh, US and Israel, which have nuclear bombs, they want to stop Iran from making a nuclear bomb. Iran uh, is on its way to uh, make nuclear bomb because Iranian nuclear uh, activities, uranium enrichment activities uh, indicate that Iran is gradually moving towards making a bomb. Two years ago, I did several videos on Iran's ambitions to make nuclear bomb. Uh, Iran is enriching uranium at a level which is seen as an attempt, as a plan to make a bomb. For research purposes, you need only 2% enriched uranium. And for the bomb, you need uh, more than 90% enriched uranium. And Iran has gone past 20-30% uh, threshold. Uh, so it is gradually moving towards uh, enriching uranium and uh, it has uh, centrifuges as well installed at some nuclear power plants uh, and some of its uh, infrastructure is under the ground. Uh, the two countries, they have vowed to stop Iran from making the bomb. Interestingly, uh, Middle Eastern Muslim countries are also against uh, Iran's uh, attempts to make the bomb like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is openly against Iran's ambitions to make the bomb. So let's see, uh, uh, this uh, today's pledge uh, is an indication that uh, US and Israel are threatening Iran, that they could uh, use force, military action could be started against Iran to stop Iran from making the bomb. Let's see. A second new story is about Somalia-Kenya relations, which remained very tense when former president of Somalia, Abdullahi Farmajo, was in power. Uh, at one time, Somalia recalled its ambassador to Kenya. Diplomatic uh, relations uh, suffered a lot. But now Hassan Sheikh Mahmood is in power and he is renewing ties with his neighbors. Uh, he has visited UAE, Turkey and Eritrea in recent days. He was elected on the 15th of May and since the 15th of May, he has visited three countries, UAE, uh, Turkey and Eritrea. And his Eritrean visit was uh, a surprise for everyone because... Uh, Eritrea did not congratulate Hassan Sheikh on his election uh, and uh, we know that thousands of uh, Somalia soldiers are receiving training in Eritrea and there were questions about uh, the deployment of these soldiers uh, allegedly to Tigray. But Hassan Sheikh travelled to Eritrea a four-day visit and there he signed an MOU as well with Isaias F. Eritrean president. And now Hassan Sheikh is due to visit Kenya. Uh, a few days ago, it was being said that uh, Hassan Sheikh would visit Kenya after Kenyan presidential election due to be held in August uh, next month. But now, according to some Somali uh, government officials, some news sources, Hassan Sheikh could visit uh, Nairobi, Kenya today or tomorrow. Preparations uh, have been uh, completed and uh, he was due to travel today reportedly but now his uh, visit has been postponed and tomorrow he will depart for uh, Kenya. We know that uh, Hassan Sheikh appointed uh, Hamza Abdibare as the new Prime Minister. Uh, the appointment was approved by Somalia's parliament too. But Hamza Abdibare uh, could not form cabinet so far and because Hassan Sheikh has been busy traveling to UAE, Turkey, Eritrea and now he is due to travel to uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, so what we are hearing is that uh, in coming hours we could see announcement regarding formation of Hamza Abdibare's cabinet. And then uh, tomorrow he is expected uh, to travel uh, to Nairobi, uh, Kenya. Uh, Kenya uh, is requesting Somalia's government to lift the ban on Kenyan 
cot imports. A cot narcotic plant is uh, imported uh, uh, by Somalia from Kenya. Uh, and two years ago, Somalia's government imposed ban on cot imports from Kenya. Uh, of, of course, Kenyan government is losing revenue. It wants uh, this ban lifted. So far, Hassan Che government has not lifted this ban. It will come in a discussion. And we know that a few months ago, International Court of Justice uh, uh, released a verdict about Kenya-Somalia maritime dispute. The verdict has not been implemented so far. It could come under discussion too. And lastly, very important point is that uh, uh, both Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia as well, uh, they are facing the threat from Al-Shabaab and uh, Hassan Sheikh is focused on uh, uh, efforts to contain, to eliminate Al-Shabaab, which is in control of one third of Somalia. So we could see some joint strategies, joint planning to start renewed offensives against uh, Al-Shabaab. Regional bilateral issues will come under discussion. I'll update you in coming hours uh, about the visit of Hassan Sheikh to Kenya. A thoroughly viewers, very important news story is from Gambela region of Ethiopia, small region, but it shares border with South Sudan. And according to some sources, uh, who uh, contacted us, uh, Gambala is becoming a recruitment field for armed groups. Uh, what we have learned is that uh, number of refugees, IDPs, is gradually increasing in Gambala. Even in some areas, number of refugees is greater than number of locals. And from, and from South Sudan as well, reportedly hundreds are entering Gambala region. A uh, reason could be instability in South Sudan, poor economic condition in South Sudan. And uh, we know that uh, economic conditions in South Sudan are worsening. Inflation on the rise, country is on the verge of a default. And uh, South Sudan's leaders, politicians, they are requesting the national community to support, to fund South Sudan's government. There is instability and there are tensions between Raik Machar, Vice President uh, forces and uh, Salva Kiir forces as well. So far, Sudan has not been able to uh, make uh, unified military in the country. The people from South Sudan are also entering Ethiopia in Gambala region. And that is why these IDPs uh, are uh, vulnerable to the recruitment drives launched by armed groups, Gambala Liberation Front and some other armed groups as well. They are operating in parts of Gambala and these refugees are being recruited in parts of Gambala. Ethiopian government must ensure strict border monitoring mechanism. Otherwise, we could see more uh, uh, IDPs arrive in Gambala from South Sudan. Thirdly, was a very important news story is about Ethiopian government's claims about two groups, Oromo Liberation Army and TPLF. Uh, today, Ethiopian Federal Communication Ministry held a press briefing. It spoke about OLA and uh, Tigray uh, People Liberation Fund. What did it say about OLA? It said, uh, action was being taken on Shene, OLA, and uh, Shene had been weakened. And uh, its commanders, fighters, uh, fleeing into neighboring countries. Now, uh, we do know that action is being taken, that uh, this is the second uh, major operation against OLA which is underway. Uh, and the second operation started after Vellega massacre. Uh, uh, 
uh, Tole massacre and Kalam Valaga massacres in which hundreds of children were killed. But when government claims that uh, it has made gains, the government should share some evidence as well. Which areas have been retaken, which towns, which cities, which uh, bases uh, have been retaken by government forces from OLA? No details, no evidence, just claim. And secondly, when government says that OLA fighters are fleeing into neighboring countries, government should tell the names of the neighboring countries too. Romia shares border with uh, Kenya. It shares border with uh, 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 Sudan. South Sudan is close as well. South Sudan, Sudan, both are close to Romia. So th the government should make it clear which countries are hosting OLA fighters. And is government doing something to stop those countries from supporting Roma Liberation Army? Just making statements is not enough. That is what government has been doing about OLA. For months, government has been claiming that OLA had been crushed, that uh, all towns, cities had been freed and OLA command was on the run. But then we saw, uh, we saw what happened in Gambala city. OLA and uh, GLF, uh, they controlled Gambala city for hours. They were fighting, they were fighting in the heart of Gambala city for hours. And then OLA took control of some places in Dambidolo as well. Uh, some prisons are being attacked by OLA. Prisoners are being freed. I have shared two videos on that. The government says OLA is on the run. It has been weakened. Its commanders are taking refuge in neighboring countries. What about TPLA? Here, government says that uh, TPLF has not uh, taken any steps towards peace. Government has formed a committee. Committee is holding its internal meetings, but TPLF is not reciprocating. Yes, uh, we know that government has formed a seven member committee uh, to start talks with Tigray government, Tigray representatives. This committee held a meeting a few hours ago, I think two days ago. I did a video on that yesterday. But so far, Tigray has not nominated its representatives. Tigray says, first, uh, before the start of talks, uh, basic services should be restored in Tigray. Banking, telecom, uh, electricity. And secondly, uh, Tigray's position is that uh, Western Tigray is non-negotiable. Talks should be held under the auspices of Kenyan president, Kenya, not African Union. African Union can be part of talks, but uh, talks should be held under uh, the auspices of uh, Kenyan president. So there are uh, disputes over the venue and the mediator. That is why talks have not started and now government says that uh, TPLF is making preparations for another war. Recruitments are continuing. Tigray Population Fund is recruiting fighters. That was said by European Federal Communication Ministry. I think Tigray uh, will form a committee in coming days. What we have learned is that Deliberations are underway. We could see announcement regarding formation of a negotiating committee in coming hours or coming days. Pressure is now uh, being built upon Tigray that it's not reciprocating government's moves. Uh, government wants to talk, but Tigray has not formed any committee. Thank you for watching.